about that. Alright guys, uh, after looking through the uh, radio vault of old radios that we have in one room, I've selected this Swan 350. Now this is a five band amateur transceiver. It covers 3.5, 7, 14, 21, and 28 megahertz. This radio was produced around 1964-65 in that area. And as you look here, you don't see any uh, mode switch for single side band or CW. But this radio does both. It does single side band, it does CW, and it'll also do AM. Now, if you're wondering why there's no mode switch, because it works on uh, back what we call double side band. And, you know, there's a carrier balance. So you can put a carrier insertion onto the frequency and works like AM. Everybody knows the old saying about swans about how bad they drift and that is true the key to a swan radio is uh turning it on letting it warm up for quite a while and that does stabilize it and you're still going to get some drift but you know that's one of the characteristics of, of the swan um you know again the old saying is what frequency does swan hold the net on well, just pick one that will be drifting by shortly. So, what I'm going to do today is just see if this whole thing even still works. Um, I've had it for some time now. Never really played with it much. And decided to select this one and just see if it even works. But the first thing we want to do is just do an inspection of it. Also, if you noticed... Uh, this one has the crystal calibrator. Now, a lot of these didn't come with a crystal calibrator. And they, Swan, made a kit to add the crystal calibrator into it. And you see someone mounted it with a switch underneath. Now, normally what they would do, you would buy a new RF gain potentiometer that has a pull switch on it. And that would turn the calibrator on. But instead of them changing out this RF gain, they've mounted it underneath here. So to get the case off, there's three screws on each side. This one only had two on each side. Uh, the two center ones were missing. And I went ahead and uh, removed those. Now it's kind of funny that there is a hole right here in the top of the chassis and straight down is a ceramic trimmer and that's where the crystal for the crystal calibrator is uh, located so someone put a hole in the top so you can stick a tuning tool down there to calibrate the crystal calibrator and that kind of interesting pull the top cover off and have a peek of the inside so looking down on the inside and yeah, we see there's quite a bit of you know corrosion that you would find on these rigs and a lot of dust <laughs> there's dust everywhere um, let me say this radio is set up for quite a while and even all the tubes are dirty we've got dust all over them but everything you know appears to be intact I don't see any tubes missing uh, the tuning capacitors doesn't look like they're gummed up with a lot of dust or dirt and we can see our two final tubes in here now, normally these would be 6HF5s. I'm not sure what is in this one, but uh, this, I'll remove these screws and take this cover off and we'll take a look and see if it has the original um, 
style tube in it or if somebody's converted it to something else. Now back in the day when Swan built these radios they used TV sweep tubes. These are horizontal output tubes for TVs. I want to get a good look inside the PA compartment just to see if I see any uh, burnt components or overheated components and so far everything's looking good I can get this uh, clip off the top of the tube these are GE Compactrons and they're 6HF5s made in the USA and both tubes looks to be identical and again you know lots of dust on it and I don't see no bad spots on the tubes so they look like they might would be okay the parasitic chokes look fine not burnt the wire on them look good and not frayed off so everything in that compartment is looking pretty good and we see here that's some uh, surface rust on this little filter and here you can see the crystal for the crystal calibrator and the uh, ceramic trimmer to uh, calibrate the calibrator and you can see here where they mounted this piece of aluminum angle and they moved the CW key up front and the switch for the uh, crystal calibrator and lots of spider webs under here the next thing we'll do is go ahead and uh, pull the bottom cover off and have a look underneath well I got all the screws removed out from the bottom and looking at what they did they just took the uh, CW key jack out of the back of the radio and just ran all of the wires for the uh, CW jack and the crystal calibrator directly under the radio Okay, so here's a look under the bottom of the radio. You can see a IF tuning stage over here. And one thing you won't see in these radios are a lot of circuit boards. However, this one does have a little small one here. And for some reason, they decided to come up with a factory fix for the drifting issue in these radios. And all they done was took this one transistor that's here extended the leads and mounted it on a little circuit board up here with a standoff and kept the transistor close to the bottom shield <laughs> uh, unfortunately that didn't work that was just something that they did to try to say that hey we're working on the issue but we see uh, this one electrolytic cap here this is a 80 microfarad at 150 volts there's a four section can here and we see a uh, spray cap here and here there's another small electrolytic here and that's about all the uh, electrolytics you'll find in this radio uh, most of the you know power comes from the external power supply that feeds all the voltages into this connector back here so you won't see a lot of uh, electrolytics in the radio itself so when I go to restore this thing, all these caps will have to go. And um, the good thing about it, I think there's plenty of room under here to mount the newer style electrolytics to replace this cam with. But you can see the radio's laid out real good. 
you know, all point to point wiring. And uh, we got our band switch here. So before we fire this up, we'll need to clean the band switch and the uh, receive tune switch, volume control, RL gain, mic gain, carry insertion switch. So we'll go ahead and clean all those while we got the uh, bottom off little cobweb stuck down there but you know the bottom of the radio looks real good okay I, I cleaned all the controls and I'm gonna work on these wafer switches now and you can see here that uh, this wafer switch, you can see how it's turned black and tarnished. Now, you got to think about how old this rig is. Like I say, it's from, you know, around 1964, 65. And what I'm going to use to clean that is Tornex. It works real good for cleaning these uh, wafer switches. And just put some on a Q-tip. And you can get right here and just uh, take that black stuff right off. You might have to, you know, rotate the switch while you're cleaning it. But once you get it cleaned, you need to flush that tarnets off. And that cleaned it right up nicely. Alright, so I got the microscope doing it handheld. And uh, I think you can see how good that cleaned that off. It took all the black right off of it. Now you can see some over there by that rivet. That's on that little tang finger that comes out. That's how the whole switch was. So here we're looking at the band switch. And you can see just how black that stuff is on that contact and you know that's not going to make a good connection we come back here and look at this one we see it's the same way you see how just everything is black even on the uh, band wafer for the uh, final tank circuit we can see it's very black. Okay, you can see now I've cleaned up the ring. Yeah, it's still black on top of it, but I can walk on that way to at least the contact part now is clean. And there's the second switch. The third switch. And the uh, fourth switch. So all those are nice and clean now. Should make contact pretty good. Alright guys. All the controls are clean. I've got this connected to the. Isolation Variac. Current limiting dummy load. And we're going to bring it up. And see what this do. Now I, you know I did mention about using this Torn X. Make sure if you're using this that you have a well ventilated area because that stuff is a little strong so we're going to turn the power switch on make sure everything is uh, set 14 my gun carrier balance on 20 meters and somebody has put some old style tape over here 
showing where they put the uh, course load at and you know that's going to change with antennas that you connect to it so we're going to uh, only thing I didn't clean is PA Vox switch I forgot to do that one but everything else is clean so we're going to bring this thing up on the uh, very act and see what she does Starting to see the uh, dial lamp starting to glow. Uh oh. And we have smoked. Okay, guys, so what I found out is that this last wafer, and if you've seen a lot of rigs like the 101, they use a ceramic wafer. And this one they use a phenolic wafer. And what it looks like, you got to remember, full B plus voltage to the final tubes is running on this wafer. And it looks like it's carbon tracked and running through this shaft. Which the shaft is uh, the closest ground on this. So it's carbon tracking, it's arcing from the terminals to the shaft now <clears throat> I could have caused this and the reason why I say that now you know when I applied the Tornex I use a q-tip now when you uh, put the Tornex on and you clean it then you have to go back and remove that Tornex residue and normally you know, I see a lot of people just take uh, spray and spray it out. And that's not a good idea on these phenolic wafer switches. Because these things are old, they're porous, they'll soak up that liquid. And if it soaks up the liquid, it becomes a uh, conductor. So normally what I'll do is, is spray the Q-tip and then go in there and try to wipe that Tornex off even still doing that you know you, you got a wet q-tip the uh, moisture can soak into that phenolic and cause it to do exactly what we're seeing here now not saying we don't know I didn't test this radio before the fault might have already been here uh, you know looking at, at the footage of the uh, when I was, you know, looking at all the, the black tarnish that was on it. I didn't really see nothing, which I, I still don't really see nothing in. But I can see the arc marks where it is, uh, you know, arcing back the ground. So, this wafer switch has to come out. And luckily, it's the end one, so it's not as bad. You just got a couple of terminals to desolder. These wires here will have to be desoldered. And there's a, another terminal that has a uh, barrel wire connected it that goes to this trimmer up here. And then there's two screws going to ground for all these silver tip capacitors. And that's basically all that's connected to that. So maybe it won't be too bad to get it out, but we'll look at it and see. Alright guys, I got the uh, wafer switch out. And the good thing, there was only two terminals that was actually connected. There's a ground terminal. Well, there's a terminal where it goes here to a trimmer capacitor. And then you had three wires that are connected to this one terminal on the top. And looking at this, yeah, it's definitely a carbon track burn. And when I pulled it out, what I did, I took a paint marker and I mark the center movable disc in line with the uh, top mount so that lets me know which way it went in 
and came out but yeah there's a burnt spot there all right so looking here through the microscope you can see that burn spot right in the center of the screen there where it's arcing to that shaft which is ground so what it's doing is jumping from this that metal ring there see that terminal that's pointing out right in the middle of the screen and it's arcing to the uh, phenolic right underneath of it again I'm not sure if my cleaning process caused this issue or it was already a failure in this radio to begin with it's really hard to say on anything like that so from past experience whenever you see phenolic right there start arcing that's pretty much it it's going to continue to arc once that carbon tracks burn into it it's going to arc the ground so the only way to, real way to fix it would be to replace this uh, wafer switch which uh, I don't know I may have some I may not that's going to be hard to say but something that we're going to try is I've got some Teflon tape and what I've done I've wrapped about five layers of this Teflon tape around this uh, metal shaft and hopefully that'll be enough to insulate that so it won't find that path to ground we'll just have to check and see all right guys i have the band switched back in i said i put teflon around that uh that shaft that would stop hopefully stop that arcing going to ground so we're going to turn the power switch on and i'm going to start bringing the variac up and if y'all see any smoke, holler, let me know. Okay, we're back to where we were earlier. The dial lamps are glowing. About 70 volts. about 90 volts I'm hearing some hum in the speaker the S meters coming up it's 115 volts so far so good and I'm gonna rotate the band switch be 20 meters there and again so far so good all right that's 120 volts I'm gonna sit there and let this soak in for just a little bit and uh, we'll come back and check all right guys she's sitting here and run in quite a bit and uh, I got the volume down we can hear a hash in the speaker, but we can see our S meter is up. Now, <laughs> these S meters are a little backwards than your standard radio. Um, one, two, I think, 60 over is on this side. So one's here, 60 over. So on receive, the meter goes this way. On transmit, the meter goes that way. So I don't have an internal hooked up. So we need to calibrate the S meter. And that's all the way down to the line. I'm going to screw in an antenna. We only see RF gains up. Mic gains halfway, carrier balance halfway.
Okay, it's intermittent, and that may be a relay. I'm going to carefully uh, set it up on its side. I'm going to check this rear right here. Okay, we definitely got something that's uh, not making a good connection. Um, I was thinking it was just a relay here, but it's not really making a difference. And it's possible it could be the other relay on the other side that's covered. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these relays off. Have to power down and uh, disconnect the power supply. So now we have to wait for these other capacitors to. Uh, bleed off but we'll go ahead and get these relays cleaned so remove this set of contacts you just uh pull the spring off into the clip you got the pull and you can kind of pull this relay up out of there but you can see just how black those are they are very dirty so i'm gonna go ahead and get them clean all right guys the uh relay's all clean and uh i went ahead and reseated all the tubes just to see if that was the problem and we can already see activity on the uh the meter so let's turn it up and PA grid kind of works like a pre-select on some of the other tube radios so by peaking the uh, PA grid and the plate it will bring the receiver up. This is a 40 meter CW, but yeah, it still sounds like there's an intermittent problem in this transceiver on receive. And you know, like I say, it could be a tube socket, could be uh, a, one of the controls is intermittent, could be a load capacitor is not grounding good. So there's a lot of good things in there that you know we just listed off that could be causing this problem. It could be a bad component, bad resistor or something that's arcing throughout the uh, the rig, you know, and it's knocking the receiver down. Um, just kind of hard to say at this moment just what's going on. Well, we know the receiver is working, but does the transmitter work? So the first thing you do is just put it in the receive mode, plug in a microphone, we'll key it up. And we want to adjust the meter for minimum. And we're going to do that by using the carrier balance. The next thing you want to do is verify about 50 milliamps of vital current.
All right, and it's going to about 50 milliamps. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we'll do is uh, go to tune and uh, peak the grid and the plate and load for maximum. And you see by setting the receiver, we're, we're just about there. So we'll give it some audio with the microphone. Hello, test one, two. Audio check, radio check, one, two. And that was the mic game about a quarter open, about halfway. Radio check, one, two. Audio, yeah, that's. 100 watts out. Contest, looking for contact from anyone, anywhere for a signal report. This is Kilo 3 Tango Whiskey, Kilowatt 3 Tokyo Whiskey, Kilo 3 Tango Whiskey in Florida. All right, guys, uh, radio is working. Um, it still has an intermittent problem on receive that we'll need to uh, address when we go to restore this thing. I'm going to order up some capacitors and uh, go ahead and recap this radio and we'll go in and we'll check out some uh, resistors and other components and you know blow the dust out of it um, check all the tubes and clean and lubricate all the uh, Available capacitors and stuff in it, and uh, well, I think we might have a nice little radio here to have some fun with, especially uh, when they're running uh, vintage equipment night or something. We'll get in and check in on the net or something with it one day and uh, see how it goes on this. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a decent little radio. Hi right, guys, so one of our viewers, um, Randy from Tennessee, sent in a decent looking ra original Radio Shack microphone. Now, you know, I know a lot of people put just grab different mics and put on these radio, but you got to remember you know, these are high impedance, so thanks Randy for sending this in. This will work nice with this uh, realistic Navajo. The radio's been recapped. New driver and final installed. Uh, RF amp new the uh, FET1, which is the mixer, we placed it. It has about a half a watt out on transmit, and the receiver is still down. Oh, yeah, uh, new relay installed. Oh, that was old new stock that I had here, and uh, still got some issues that I'm working through on it, and I've got a few more parts that's on order, so we'll be getting back to this uh, before long and see can we get this 457 finished up now a good friend Mr. B from uh, Florida sent this in and uh, all I have to do is pay shipping on it and this is a uh, old Chris 23 plus that he restored and sent it in along with a parts radio chassis and uh, he's been completely through this thing I went ahead and took the covers off of it, and I'm going to tell you, he did a excellent job on restoring this old Chris radio. And now I have one of these, it's like brand new, still in the box, but it's the uh, the green color one, if you've seen those. Uh, I can't remember exactly which model it was, it's been a while since I took it out. But I also had several more of these that needs to be restored in the other room but uh yeah this thing works pretty good they got excellent receivers on there. yeah now i don't know what he painted this with but it looks real nice so thanks Mr. B, this is a uh, very nice radio to add to the collection here. I'm going to put that back on standby. 
So guys, that's it for now. And uh, let me know uh, what you think about the way we did this video. We just went up in the uh, the radio vault. I went, took a look at some random things. Grabbed one, put it on the bench, just see if we can get it up and running. And see, this one does have a few problems, but it's pretty much working without you know doing very minimum to it they got remember the capacitors in this thing is looks original <laughs> they've never been changed out uh, the power supply has been rebuilt at one time or another so uh, I won't as worried about it as much because I actually took this power supply and used it on someone else's radio to repair it so I know the power supply was working but uh, I want to restore this radio here sometime in the future so it'll be on the list uh, so let me know about just what you think about just grabbing random radios out of the vault and going through them and if you saw anything in there that you want to uh, see us work on uh, let us know in fact uh, there was a CB radio in there it's a, uh, a base station I bought when I was 14 years old and still have it to this day Anyway, guys, take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now.